This technique is best done on a fondant covered cake versus buttercream. I'll be working with this two-tiered square cake, but this technique will also work on a round cake. So to start, we'll create the flags. How do you determine the size of the flags? Well, here I created a template that is the exact size of my cake, as you can see right here. This is a six inch and the bottom tier is an eight inch. And to figure out the size of my flags, I need to determine what the message is. Here I'm gonna be writing out happy birthday. So I know that happy has five letters and birthday has eight letters. So I take my different um, ring cutters and try to find a size. So I know that this will be too big because I can't fit eight letters um, here. And I'm gonna be curving my, curving my bunting. So that's what I'm going for. So I picked a smaller size and this actually fits really well for eight letters here and five letters up here. So I have a template that I already made. So here, here is the template and you can see that these are the circles I used. So now that we have this all laid out, I know exactly where my flags are gonna be placed and how I'm gonna assort them because I'm gonna be alternating colors. So I just wanna get my rolled out gum paste. And here we have orange and pink. So we just take our circle cutter and we just wanna press it into our gum paste and pop it out through the top. And once we do that, we're gonna create two little circles on top so that we can string our ribbon through. So I have a number two uh, piping tip here. And then just on the top, you can create two holes and there you go this is all you need for the flag so i already have all my flags cut out so this will be the last one so now i want to move on to cutting out letters for my flags now i'm going to be using tappets which are these and I know that these are gonna fit into my flags perfectly because I already tested it before um, and made sure that they fit within the diameter of my topper. So in order to use these, I'm gonna take my gum paste and I'm just gonna cut them into thin strips. And same thing with the orange. And then I'm gonna start by um, pressing out the letters or tapping out the letters that I need. So in order to do that before, I take some cornstarch and I put it into the tappets so that the gum paste doesn't stick once I try to take it out. So because my first circle is gonna be orange, I'm gonna cut out a pink H. So you wanna just press firmly into your gum paste and kind of shake it around so you know that the cut is clean. And then you'll notice that you can try to tap them out, but if they're being a little difficult, um, you can always use an X-Acto to kind of guide them out. But this one came out perfectly, so we're just gonna brush off that cornstarch. Um, and then I'm gonna go ahead and do this with the rest of the letters. So I want to talk about these tappets for a second. Um, they come in multiple fonts, but I only have this one set. So I want to show you how you can alternate this font. So I just take my letter and these lines that are protruding out, I just cut them off. So if you do that, you have a different style font. And these do come only in one size, even though they are in different fonts. So if you have a bigger flag and you need your letters to be bigger, you can either use edible marker to write your letters in, or you can also pipe your letters right on the flags. So now I'm gonna show you how to mount the letters onto your flags. 
So we just take a really small brush and with a little bit of water, we want to turn our letter upside down and just gently brush a little bit of water on there. And then I like to use a palette knife to kind of guide me. Um, so I just want to get it right in the center of that disc right there and just press down gently. So I'm going to go ahead and do this with the rest of my flags. So I just finished mounting all my letters onto my flags and look how fun they look. They are now ready to be uh, mounted onto the side of this cake. You can use differently shaped flags here. I use circles here because I thought it would look good on the cake. But you can use um, flags such as triangles for instance like I did in this cake here. If the name or word that you're spelling is not long enough to cover a significant width of your cake, um, you can fill in the extra space with flags that have stars or hearts or any other shapes on them like I did here on this aiding cake. All right, now let's get on to mounting our flags. Now our flags with the letters are ready to mount on our cake. So I'm just going to make sure that I laid everything out and that the spelling is correct. Um, and once I have that, I'm going to go ahead and um, Take my template for the cakes, and with a little um, clothes or like a a, sm a small pin, I'm actually going to lay this on, and then start poking through my template little dots, so I can create a guide of where my ribbon should be laid. And notice that the circles will lay a little bit above this line because we're showing the threading effect. And so you want this line to be right where the holes on your flags are. Okay, so now we have this indicator of how much our curve should be. So I just want to take a little bit of water and lightly trace that curve. Now don't use too much water because if you use too much water here on your brush it'll drip down the side of your cake and it'll be really hard to fix. But if that does happen you can try to take all the excess moisture off and brush some cornstarch on it so it'll um, absorb that moisture. So make sure everything is wet. Okay, now I have these strips that I cut out of the yellow gum paste. They're an eighth of an inch thick, and I just cut them about four inches longer than the size of my cake because I wanna make sure that it accommodates the curve. So we can just go ahead and along that curve, attach, oh, we could actually Take that off. Oh. So my string broke, but it's okay because we'll probably be covering it with one of the flags. So go ahead, get it towards the end. Okay, so that looks good for our first string. Same thing for the bottom tier. Just a little bit of water. Okay, and with our second string, touch it right onto there. Cut the end off and kind of reposition your string so that it has a nice flow to it. 
So the width of my bottom tier was eight inches and I did cut ribbon that was 12 inches long just so I made sure that I can accommodate this curve and I had extra just in case. So now I'm going to teach you how to have that threading effect in your flags. So I cut out more strips that are uh, eighth of an inch thick and we're just going to cut these into little pieces and you'll see why. So for each little piece that we cut, I want to squeeze the end so they kind of come together and make a point and then curve them. Then I'm going to take one of my flags with a little bit of water. I'm going to paint the inside of that hole and be sure not to use too much water again because we don't want it to puddle. Then we're just going to take the little strips and insert them. This one's a little long, so I'm just going to cut a little bit off. So you want to insert these into your hole, each end into your hole. And you can use the back of your brush to kind of squeeze it in there. So that's the look we're going for. So let me show you that one more time. So we have another flag here, and with another piece of gum paste, we're going to pinch the corners and then fold it over a little, and then take some water, put a little bit right where the holes are, and then take our little piece of gum paste ribbon, and then we're going to Stick it right into the holes. And you can use the back of your brush again nope, to make sure that they get in there. And you just want to make sure that the ribbon is a little, a little curved and coming off of your um, flag so it really truly looks like ribbon is being threaded through them. Okay, so that looks good. And I'm going to go ahead and finish the rest of my flags. So now that all my flags are threaded, I'm ready to mount them onto my cake. So to start mounting, I'm going to work on the top tier. And I always want to start from the center out. So for this, we're going to use the P. And we just want to, again, put a little bit of water on the back, not too much. And then right around the center of my cake, which is right here, I'm going to place this disc. But I also want to make sure that this thread is in line with my string here. So I'm going to raise it above, like right there, and glue it down. So now it looks like this, um, this piece of ribbon is threading seamlessly through this disc. So I just eyeball the center of my cake, but you can definitely take a ruler and make sure that you're right in the middle. So now I'm going to add a couple more letters to this, um, the A and the P. Again, just following that, that ribbon, matching it up. So now I'm going to continue applying the letters uh, to my top tier and bottom tier using the same method. Okay, I finished attaching the rest of my flags onto this cake and you can see that the ribbon really looks like it's threading through each flag and creates this very fun and festive look. If you're using a flag shape that has corners like I did with this bunting cake, you can create a different look of threading by connecting the ribbon between the edges of the flags. This doesn't work as well with the circle flags, but it works very well with flags that have corners. <laughs>